Australia is on the cusp of making economic history. If the national accounts out tomorrow show a growing economy in the first quarter, it will make a world record run without a recession. But it's a big if. Today's current account figures were worse than expected, so it's possible we won't hit the milestone. If we do, how significant an achievement is it? And are we primed for a bust? Here's Stephen Long. The last time Australia was in recession, this song hit the top of the charts. And this show had its Australian debut. The Simpsons went on to become the longest running animation in history. And barring a disaster, no! Australia's economy is set to make history too, possibly as early as tomorrow. It is one of the most extraordinary periods of economic growth, not only in Australian history, but also in world history. We will clock up 103 consecutive quarters without a recession. Passing the Netherlands record for the longest continuous streak without a recession in modern history. More than 26 and a half years on from Paul Keating's utterance of this famous phrase. This is a recession that Australia had to have. Those of us old enough can remember how brutal that last recession was. The unemployment rate peaked at 11%. But Keating had a point. The inflation that had dogged the economy up till then was crushed in that recession, never to return. And the conventional wisdom is that policy reforms have helped deliver the sustained economic growth that we've had ever since. But don't discount the role of dumb luck. It's been said that the Australian economy is like a twin-engine plane. One of those engines is housing and one of those engines is resources. And we can fly as long as one of them is going strong. And over the last 26 years, we've been in the lucky position that as housing has fallen off, resources have been strong. And when resources have fallen off, we've been lucky that housing's been strong. But if both engines shut down? Well, if both engines shut down, then the plane can't fly. And that's the real risk for the future. In the long term, if we don't find new drivers for growth, sustainable growth, Australia isn't looking very happy. Labor market researcher Ian Watson says the gains from the long period of growth have been far from evenly shared. Predominantly gone to the top of the labor market, to those with income based on shares and property and those very high wage earners. Those at the bottom of the labor market have had stagnant wages for the best part of 30 years. In contrast to the long period of shared prosperity after the Second World War, when a rising tide lifted all boats, not just the yachts. The decline of manufacturing and the erosion of secure full-time employment have been defining features of the current era. The old standard of the full-time permanent job has been shrinking. It now is making up only a little bit over half of all the jobs. You've had the casual jobs, the part-time jobs, the temporary jobs, the labour hire and contracting jobs. All of these sorts of work don't pay as well. Unfortunately, we're ending the world's longest period of economic growth with Australian wages growth at a record low. And that feels like a paradox. How can a country that has been so prosperous world-beatingly prosperous, be in a situation now where workers are taking home the lowest wages growth in recorded history. While worker power and wages breakouts were seen as a problem for the economy before the last recession, today the opposite is true. Low wages growth and a lack of bargaining power for workers is fueling inequality and economic risks. One of the problems with stagnant wages over a long period of time is people become reliant on debt for day-to-day -day living and the inflation of asset prices in the property market has meant people have unsustainable mortgages. David Llewellyn Smith from Macro Business says we're approaching a phony record period of growth, the latter years sustained by high immigration. You run immigration at 1.5% per annum, that basically gives you 1.5% growth before you even start. But, but what it also does is carve the pie up among, uh, you know, a higher number of people. And so in per capita terms, you go backwards. 
the record run can't go on forever. Most booms of this nature, when they run for this long, end up with equal size corrections. It's, it's kind of one of the laws of economics and markets that the bigger the boom, the bigger the bust. Don't, 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 you know what I mean. Still, it would be kind of sexy to beat the Dutch and make history. But whether we're a model economy is another story. And I'm too sexy.